Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the Java web development series for Servlets and JSP. This episode, I'm going to show you how to access request parameters for Git requests. So sometimes when you go to a website, you may see something like this. Instead of going to github.com, you know, directly, we also go to github.com slash search question mark question or Q is equal to cake. So what this here is, is uh, it's basically a way for you to enter parameters into a Git request, okay? So you put a question mark and then you put the uh, name of what you're, you know, the, like the variable name basically, and then you're putting equals and then behind the equals you're putting the value. And so this is useful, uh, well, you can commonly see this for something like a search bar. So if you search anything inside of here, like trains, you'll see that the URL is changed from slash search question mark Q equals cake to slash search question mark Q equals trains. So you're using this uh, these parameters in the Git request and that's gonna be sent to the, you know, I don't think they're using servlets for this application, but that data, these parameters here are gonna be sent into the servlet request and then we can grab it and then uh, process. Uh, we can search our database for trains for the search term and then we can display to the user uh, what we found, you know, given the search term that was found. So hopefully that makes sense. And we're going to explain this, or we're going to see this more in a second. But yeah, this is commonly used inside of websites for different things. Like I said, commonly for search thingies, thingamajiggies. And um, yeah, so we're making Git requests. But uh, you can also do it for post requests, except that the main difference between a Git request parameter and a post request parameter is that is that with post requests, the parameters are going to be put into the body of the request, so they're not displayed openly in the URL. So they're pretty much hidden from the user. And um, so there's going to be different use cases for uh, parameters with Git and post requests. And we're going to see that in a few episodes. But first, we're going to look at how we can use it with Git requests, okay? Okay, so let's go back to our application here and get started. We're, we're just going to make a simple servlet so we can test this feature out. We're going to call this, uh, we'll do name servlet. So we're going to have the user enter their first and last name as a as two parameters into a git request, okay? So pretty simple enough. And we're going to, oops, we don't want to create a new class. I mean, we can, but let's just use the servlet feature. So creating servlet, and we'll call this name servlet. There we go. So now we got a new servlet here. Let's map it to a URL. And we'll do uh, URL patterns slash name slash name. And so, like I said, we're going to have them provide a first and last name. So we want them to be able to do something like this. So localhost 8080 slash uh, name and then question mark. Question mark is how you uh, let the request basically know that you're making or yeah, you're about to pass parameters. So we're going to do question mark and then you want to give the first parameter name. So first name is what we'll call it. And then the value of that is going to be Cody. And then if they want to have a second parameter, you just separate them each by uh, ampersands. And then so last name is Simpson. So then they press enter and that's going to be processed. Obviously, GitHub does not know how, you know, what to do with that information. So it's just going to, oh, that's his localhost. Okay, so that's fine. But yeah, we don't have a server spun up right now. So our localhost doesn't know how to process that information. So what we want to do now is figure out how we can process that information. So how do we grab uh, parameters from a Git request so that we can use them in different ways? Um, well, of course, that information is going to be stored in the request. That's where you might think it would be stored, and that's exactly where it is stored. So we can do a request dot, and we have all these different methods here, just so you're aware there's many different things we can do with these two objects here. And we're going to explore um, a lot of this in the future. So yeah, you can grab the headers, um, the header names. You can get uh, just uh, pretty much whatever you want, the request URL the servlet path, you can get session stuff, cookies, all that cool stuff. But what we, what we want to grab is the parameter. So we can do request.get parameter, get parameter, and we can give it the name of the parameter that we want to grab. And before we do that, let's actually look at the documentation. So I pulled up the Java docs for Java EE8. So now we just need to find the servlet um, information. So we'll click servlet down here and go to servlet. Um, then we'll look for HTTP servlet. And the um, the request is what we need to get. So we'll get HTTP servlet request interface. And that's what provides the get parameter method, I think. So control F get parameter. Ah, cool, so this is uh, inherited from another interface called servlet request. And here we go. So get, serv uh, get parameter, we'll click on this. So now we get all the information on the get parameter method. So 
let's just read this real quick. Uh, returns the value of a request parameter as a string or null if the parameter does not exist. So request parameters are extra information since with the request for HTTP servlets, parameters are contained in the query string or posted form data. And you should only use this method when you are sure the parameter only has one value. If the parameter might have more than one value, use get parameter values, which is another method you can use to get, obviously, more than one value. Um, and if you use this method with a multi-value parameter, the value returned is equal to the first value. So if you don't heed the advice to use the get parameter values method, it's just going to give you the first value um, if you use this method, okay? And then if the parameter data was sent in the request body, such as occurs with an HTTP post request, then reading the body directly via uh, get input stream or get reader can interfere with the execution of this method, okay? So this is pretty simple. Um, it's just going to return a string of what you're looking for, the parameter, or null if it doesn't exist, okay? So let's use that information to use this method here. So like I said, we want them to provide a first name and a last name. So we're going to use this method here to get those two values. So we're going to have a string here. So first name, and what we need, what we want to do is do first name is equal to request dot get parameter, and then we want to provide the name of the parameter. So first name, and so like I said, if first name exists, then it's going to return the value of that parameter. If it does not exist, we want to, it's going to return null. And so uh, let's do the second one. Last name is equal to request dot get parameter last name so to be safe we want to check to see if any of these values are null because we don't know for sure if the user provided both of these parameters or even any of them at all so we want to do if first name is equal to null or last name is equal to null then we know we need to be careful and we're just going to say uh, s out they um, a full name was not provided so we're not going to do anything further. Uh, otherwise, if um, both of these values are not null, we'll just say hello to that person. So s out um, hello first name space oops space last name come nice to meet you. So pretty simple. So if they do um, you know supply the first la uh, first name and last name in the get request, we're going to grab that information and then uh, say hello Cody Simpson nice to meet you or whatever name that is provided and if any of these two values do not exist then they're going to be null so we're just going to say a full name was not provided so yeah hopefully that makes sense we're just using the get parameter method here to get that parameter and we're just going to check to see if it actually existed or not um, in the request okay so let's get this all set up here so we can test this out all right, so we go to localhost 8080. Of course, we're going to get 404 because we don't have an index page. That's fine. So now we'll do slash name just by itself, and let's see what happens. So now we get a full name was not provided. Okay, cool, because that's, that's because we didn't provide any name, either a first name or a last name. So now let's try doing uh, providing a name. So we'll zoom in here for you. So question mark is how you tell it you, you're about to enter some parameters into the request. So we'll do first name is equal to Cody, and then and uh, last name is equal to Simpson. Press enter to make the get request. And now we can come back to here. And now it says, hello, Cody Simpson, nice to meet you. So now let's try removing one of these. So we'll say if, uh, or just provide a first name, so Cody. And then it says um, a full name was not provided because if any of these are null, then it'll say that because we need both to say hello first and last name, okay? Otherwise, we're going to get a null exception, which is no fun. And yeah, so pretty simple stuff. That's how you get a parameter from a get request. Um, all you got to do is use the get parameter method and then be wary of a null exception um, just by, you know, the way you can, of course, you know, get around that is just by checking to see if it's null or not. Okay. And yeah, that's how you do that. But um, like I said, you can also do this with a post request. I'm going to show you in a separate video how to do that because that is commonly done. Uh, post requests are commonly made with uh, forms. So I'm going to show you how to make a post request with a form and then grab information from the form and all that fun stuff, okay? If you have any questions about what I showed you this episode, feel free to leave a question in the comment section below or join our Discord server. We have a big Discord server with over 1,300 members last time I checked. So if you need any help at all with your programs, you can hop into one of these help channels and get some help.
You can also just hang out and get some new friends if you want to, so just make sure you click the invitation in the description below. Don't forget in the description below, I'll also leave a link to the code for this episode so you can come back to it at any time and use it as a reference. I'll leave good detailed comments around the code so you can have a good explanation in text form too, in case you don't want to watch my awesome videos again. One final thing I want to tell you about, if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video, and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month. If you join, you can get cool perks like a special Discord rank on my server, early access to these videos, and you get shouted out like you see on the screen right now. If that sounds good to you, feel free to join for, like I said, as low as 99 cents a month. Alright, that's it. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.